Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Abby with Abby Reviews, and this is going to be my review and recap for Cartel Crew season whatever, episode, season three. I want to say episode six or seven. I can't remember. It's all a blur. It's wedding time. Dramatizations feel like they're about to pop off. I, somebody may get swung on one. We shall see. Let's get into it. Okay, so we start back and we're still in the middle of the wedding festivities it's the evening time everybody's hanging out at the pool they're looking out on the grill and stuff so everybody's like so stephanie's like let me go get my best friend let me see what she's doing and cat is really not she's she just like she doesn't have control over her emotions so she don't want to be in people's faces especially not in eddie's face because again it's just slapping it in her face so she sits out there for a couple minutes and she's like i got a headache i'm gonna go lay down Eddie's like, are you okay? And she's like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. And you can tell she's not. And so when she leaves, they, the conversation turns to her. And it's like, well, he's like, I don't know. He's like, I thought it was my reaction to my girl being in danger that had her like this. And she was like, no, it actually was about her having a tattoo. And she loved you enough to put your name permanently on her body. And it just took her to a place. And she just completely broke down. And he was like, well, how does it look for me trying to get closure and I'm in a whole new relationship? One has nothing to do with the other, though. That's that's I don't think that's what he's getting. He, I feel like he thinks that if he goes back to give Kat the closure that she needs, that he would be betraying his girlfriend or he feels like he would need to do something that would dishonor his relationship that he has now. And that's not it. Have a conversation. Be open and honest with this woman. Give her the closure that she needs because clearly she's hurting and he doesn't you don't want her to hurt because that's the mother of his kids and you know he self-admits that she was good she was good to me it just did not work out so give her what she needs so she can close the wound and move on and find the happiness that you want for her dear god on high oh god so Betty is sitting out there on a bench somewhere and so Michael comes out he's gonna smoke a cigar and he's like what's going on with you and she was just like it was a lot but find the girl being at the active shooter in the closet and hiding from the man and it's just a whole lot and she starts crying and she he was like I understand how you feel he's like I was angry he's like I'm scared from July 4th to the 17th that somebody's going to come and kill me because my mother and brothers died in that time frame every time they were murdered it was in that 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 span of time and he was like i was angry i just wanted to kill everybody he's like the kill the house the dog everything start crying and she's still crying he's like i don't think i can do this and he grabs her up to try and comfort her child it's a lot they're, they all in their feelings grief is horrible grief is, i'm so glad i'm watching this today and not yesterday because i would have been tore up but grief is a horrible thing child oh god lord fix it fix their heart comfort their hearts lord jesus Bear with me because it's lunchtime. Um, so Michael has some real conversation with Betty and tells her the real. It's it's going to hurt and it's going to continue to hurt for a long time. But eventually you'll find your balance and your sister will be your guardian angel smiling down at you and she'll be happy for your success. And when you have children, one day you'll look in your children's eyes and you'll see her reflected back at you and you will be okay. So... They hugged it out and said, they, I love you and all that beautiful stuff. It was really. Okay, so Kat and Eddie the next morning sit, are sitting on the front porch having a conversation. And he says to her, I just want to let you know, because it's Mother's Day. And he's like, oh, how grateful I am that you are my child's mother. And how when I was gone, there was no hesitation. You stepped up and played both roles when I couldn't be there and for that I'm grateful and I don't ever want you to think that I don't appreciate or recognize what you have done and while that is great that that's what he said that's not what she that's that healed some of it but that's not what she needed but we're gonna leave it the right where it is for right now because that ain't that ain't it but he arranged for their son to be there. He came around. It's so cute. Came around the corner, little car about Happy Mother's Day, and oh, that was super cute. And unfortunately, the balloon 
got blown into the pool and he was like i'm gonna rescue it for my favorite mom and she's like wait i'm your only mom okay but it was super cute and i appreciate that he put forth the effort to try and make it right even though he's misguided about what it is that he's drawn on okay we're gonna keep it moving because the drama get ready to start child the foolishness so um it's the rehearsal dinner cats like i know i'm boring but we finna turn up tonight give me a shot of hennessy straight i'm not straight as straight as a shot of no chaser child no game eddie's like oh this is not gonna be she don't mm, this ain't gonna turn out white while they doing all of that and kiki and stuff here come diana out of left field and the whole mood shifts the only person who's still eddie clapping see behind she's like yeah nobody else is clapping and saying yay everybody else is like mm. and so now they're getting into it and she was like you told me that you chose him over me and it hurt my feelings and she was like well i wasn't trying to make a choice but you made a choice daughter you did and then you said you were making a choice so you don't backpedal and pussy pop off of it now standing your shit you chose your man over coming like how you don't trust yourself Self enough you can't hold your legs together for a weekend for your friend to get married now that's more your issue than anyone else's daughter so i i don't understand and your does your man know you that well or is he that insecure that he can't have you out of his presence because he think you're gonna do something and then they threw magic under the bus He's like, yo, want to be here alone with Magic me? is over there in the corner like, wait, I just work here. What, what? How did I get into? I'm just sitting over here minding my damn business. Just because at one point I might or may not have hooked up with her don't mean that that's going to. I'm just over here minding my business. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't roll me under the bus. Once again, Miss Stephanie. I can't even call it overstepping your bounds because you, it really, you did, weren't the one who actually popped off. Diana popped off when she got hit in the face with all that truth. And then she decided to throw a wine glass at you because you were speaking truth to her foolishness. So, and um, Marie was like, I want y'all to squash this because I want there to be uh, unity. Unity. Because um, it's my wedding. And she was like, and Diana's like, I thought you and I were good. She's like, we are good. But I've seen her in agony because you were my sister. My, we're her extended family. Her real family isn't here. We're the only family she got. So in these times, regardless of what you got going on, this is the time you're supposed to step up and be there for her when you know she needs you. And us watching her be in agony because you weren't here, because you decided that your new dick was more important than what was happening here. Like you couldn't hold yourself accountable. You couldn't be accountable enough as a woman to reassure your nigga that you're not going to cheat you are not here for that you were just here to stand up for your sister as she got married like i don't understand what the issue is or why he had an issue or why you had an issue like i don't so you don't so you were coming with the intention to sleep with this man or like oh i might get too drunk and if i get too drunk i might end up in his bed no don't accidentally trip and fall onto a dick that is a conscious choice that you decide to make so i don't again i don't understand once you were told you know we don't know your new boo so unfortunately he can't stay at the house get him a room that's not too far away so that he might can come to the house for some of the festivities, but he's not laying his head down here so y'all can still be together. But for you to not come to any of the festivities at all and then show up at the 17th hour and then don't expect no pushback is delusional. And the fact that you got mad that she spoke truth to your foolishness to the point to where you threw a drink across the table, wrong. You are wrong, daughter. And I don't be sticking up for Stephanie because Stephanie do the damn most when nobody asks her to. But she this time she right. Ooh, Lord, the amount of gaslighting happening at this dinner table. So 
now they try to say, oh, Ste Diana Scrimmity, Stephanie, why'd you have to ruin the event? Why'd you have to ruin the event? Stephanie asked you to explain yourself because she saw her friend hurt behind your actions. So she asked you, why did you think that this was appropriate? And because you got mad because you were wrong. You threw a drink. You ruined the event, Diana. This is your fault, baby. Because you're not adult enough to be held accountable for your actions. You decided to toss a drink. Which then blew up the whole situation. Even Michael was like, Stephanie has a point. This is not Stephanie. This, this is not Stephanie's fault. Stephanie didn't throw a drink. She didn't do this. She asked. She tried to be civil with your snagged ass. And ask you why you did what you did. And why did you think that was appropriate? Who is the hurt party behind this? But Diana's choices. Is saying Stephanie was 100% correct. You, you blew this up. And, and Diana is, keeps screaming, this bitch, this bitch, she's the one, it's her fault, it's her fault. No, darling, you're going you're gonna to you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to take this L this time. Stephanie says, whenever I pop off and blow off, I have, I have to take the L because I couldn't get myself together. You're going to have to take the L this time because this is your fault. And she refused. Let's see if she's she going to take responsibility. Because Stephanie has to take responsibility. When she flipped out and threw that shit... She had to take responsibility for her actions. So why don't you feel like you have to take responsibility for yours when you flip out? Because it's you. That's not how it works. Okay, so no, she didn't accept responsibility for her actions. She's still trying to say that Stephanie is trying to steal her spotlight. But she's not. Now, the men are like, now we understand. We see your loyalty. And we're not, we not wrong. It's just your presentation. She was like, I'm sorry. I'm not a person who can hold stuff in. Me and Kat are yin and yang. Kat will hold it in, hold it in. And I, it's just like vomit. It's just going to come right out of my mouth. I can't, I can't hold on to it. And sometimes, I listen, I am not a Stephanie fan. I believe that she does too much most of the time. But this time, no ma'am. She was, she was absolutely correct. She was given permission by the hurt party to try and come to some type of agreement. And because... Diana couldn't accept responsibility for her actions in this matter. She just thought showing up would resolve the issue. No, ma'am. She decides in all of her infinite wisdom because she doesn't want to answer for the hurt that she caused. She just going to throw a drink and blow up the situation. And then she was like, well, if you approve of what she did, then I'm going to leave. Girl, thank you for coming. Appreciate it. No, goodbye. Thanks. Thanks. Too little too late at some point. Too little, too late. Child, is the next day. Everybody is getting ready. Marie says at this point she doesn't want Diana to be there. And because she doesn't want no drama or anything. And Stephanie, again, being the bigger person, says, listen, if you want her here, have her here. And I will take a step back and swallow whatever it is that I have because I don't want your day to be ruined. But if you don't, if you don't feel like she don't, she doesn't deserve to be here, and you don't want her here, I will handle that as well. It's whatever you want because it is your day, and your happiness is tantamount. Nobody, it doesn't, and nobody else's matters. Well, Michael, but in this instant, nobody else's matters but you and how you feel about the situation. Then cat come tipping in with some big sunshade. Girl, you have one Boy. thing. Unless she, she had to have more to drink after the cameras were off. Because they, they said it was up all night. And we didn't get to see that. So you had to be drinking hardcore all night. For you to come up in here and look with them big sunshades on. Like Jesus of Nazarene. Please help me, daughter. Because I know that one shot ain't get you to that. The way you acting like this. Girl, drink some water. So Michael has this emotional conversation with a picture of his mother. About how he told her he was going to do it. I, you sent me an angel. You know today i take a bride and i know you sent her because y'all have the same birthday thank you for sending me a real one ba 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 lovely he's crying let's let's go get married so we did go to marie and all the ladies are dressed and their hair still in pin curls and stuff and so marie's makeup is full done and they tried to get her in a dress and she gets this delivery of flowers and diana's trifling behind so they say, i'm your real friend and i wish i could be there but maybe this is for the best p.s Stephanie's a hating ass bitch. And Stephanie's a hating ass bitch and it's on site. You put that on the card though. 
trifle. So forget everything that she said before. How I love you. And I want you to have the greatest day. But then you put a threat on the back of the card to the girl. Further going to prove, showing to prove Stephanie was correct. Yeah. And Stephanie's like, well, I'm here and you're not. So. Ding. <laughs> Yeah, that part hurt my damn feelings. Okay, so um, before she decides to get in her dress, she goes outside. I just want to say I prefer her with the nude lip than the red lip, but that's neither here nor there. Um, she goes outside to make one last phone call to her parents because when she got the flower, she, her first thought was, oh, my parents are in here, but they're letting me know they still love and care for me because they sent me flowers, but it weren't from Diana. So she goes and leaves a message, and she was like, at this point, you know, um, I can't fight for it anymore. Y'all don't, clearly y'all don't want to be here. My dream was to have my daddy walk me down the aisle for you, mommy, to be, you know, sitting front and center proud that my daughter is marrying the father of my child, all that good stuff. But y'all clearly have more angst against his family. I just still want to know what the Blancos did to your parents' family that they treat you like this. Like, just because she was a drug dealer and, you know, maybe had some people killed. Uh, did she have some of your family killed? Is that what it is? Why this vendetta? Why? Why? That woman is dead. So, it, and now at this point, because of your stubbornness, you've lost your child and your grandchild and any grandchildren that are soon to come because your pride was bigger than fixing this rift with your kid. And that is a, Also, it, I would like to say this Damon, Damien Omen music that they're playing under this is really sending me. <laughs> She's like, today I become a Blanco. And then, oh, 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 like... <laughs> Y'all trifling for that. Trifling. Okay, so the wedding went off, went off without a hitch. They had beautiful vows to each other. Um, I felt a little sad in my spirit that she had to walk down the aisle by herself. I kept saying it because she was, she was having a little trouble with her dress. I wanted to say, kick, kick in front of you. Kick the dress in front of you to get it out your way so you don't trip on it. Like her mama would have told her that. Okay, listen, let me get out of my feelings. Uh, Jesus, because they're tender right now but you know everything was beautiful they drove off in a car happily ever after beautiful that's how the episode ended the reception is gonna cause cats some issues but we'll get to that next week this is my review and recap my review and recap of curtail crew season three episode seven a very blanco wedding part two please like comment and subscribe tell a friend tell a kin and i will catch you in the next one peace